Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope y'all are doing great. Welcome back to Creta. Create every day in April. Today is day two. Yesterday we started off with this beautiful Jamie Doherty Prima stamp. Her name is Serena or Serena. Um, we're going to finish her up. In my previous Creta's, I would just start a project and try to complete it and move on. But for this year in this craters we're going to start a project and carry it all the way through completion so we may be doing the same thing for more than one day we have 30 days to at least complete five projects right at least five projects um so we're just coloring her up and i am my allergies are going crazy right now so early in the morning too but they are having a hissy fit right now a hissy fit that's not the right color okay um i saw that i had missed this little pearl beading but no one's gonna know but me and you right <laughs> um so i'm just coloring her hair this could take a long long time but we'll just chit chat talk about all our adventures um for the upcoming weekend, I have no real adventures planned. I'm going to go to Walmart today or Target or the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to get maybe, maybe 20 eggs. I have eggs from last year for my son and just some random little um, treats, some candy jelly beans etc and um i'll probably end up packaging them up on sunday so he won't see what's in there i'm gonna put some erasers and pencils and little toys um and a few pieces of candy but tomorrow tomorrow saturday what i plan on doing is um Letting him dye a few Easter eggs with me. And then we're going to do a, the basket. His basket I will work on by myself without him. I'll put, I think I'm going to put a toy in there. A small toy. Maybe. We'll see. Thing is, lately he's been Inspector Gadget. And even though he doesn't know where all mommy's hiding places is. Because normally I just hide stuff in plain style for him and the big roommate. He's getting better at finding stuff. So what I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish coloring her hair and come back. All right, I'm going to use some earth red as well. Yep, I want her hair to be a little bit more browner. So I'm just going to come in. And just um, color over that teak brown. I do like this reddish brown hair tone um, in person and the color. So now I'm just going to come back with the teak brown and color over it and see if I get the effect that I'm looking for. My eyes are acting up this morning. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and color all the strands, the stresses again with this earth red. All right. So if you wanted to um, try and pull the teak brown out some, you could do that. I noticed with this marker... The earth red that the for me while coloring on here the chisel is a little bit darker if you can see it just seems to be a little bit darker so I started with the chisel and then I went in with the um, bullet point if you want to call it that I think that's what they're calling it anyway um, and so I ended up having to come back with the chisel and covering it so if you want to come over and attempt to pull that teak 
brown out of your image you could come back and color over it but I really like the depth that the hair has gotten now with the earth red earth yeah earth red it's like a dark brownish red depending on how the sun hits the hair right I'm not sure if your hair is like that my hair is black but in the summertime or in in good lighting I have brown hair like different brown a lighter brown lighter I guess a lighter shade of black right but brown isn't a shade of black but I hopefully you understand what I'm saying because <laughs> I sound like a crazy lady now and I think I want to just color her cheek a light peach color I'm not sure if this color is going to be the final color if it doesn't look right to me, we will find something a little bit darker and cover it up. Eh, looks okay. Now it's time for the scissors. <laughs> Well, we'll probably leave the house later than normal. And I would like to leave the house. So we'll probably leave the house about 9. <laughs> so much later, right? Around 9 o'clock, maybe 10. It depends if I try to get another video in after I finish this one. If you have a electronic cutting machine. Cricut Silhouette Scan and Cut. I wouldn't be opposed to doing that with this stamp. Um, you would just have to make sure it knows not to cut these little straight things off for the Scan and Cut at least. I'm just going to go ahead and cut these bubbles off. So I watched the video. I've been trying to catch up as well as like if I'm in the car. So when I drive in the car, I'll watch, quote unquote, watch a video. But it's really like listening, and then if I stop at a stop sign, then I'll look down and glance at it. But most of the time, I just listen to the um, the person that has posted a video. And lately, um, I have been trying to figure out how to get some of my, um, how to do, I guess you could say, properly stamp out photopolymer stamps and so yesterday on the way from the hospital I had to go pick up the medication um, Gina K designs posted a video she said that a lot of people were calling customer service saying that they wouldn't get a good stamp on one of the stamps that they just released and I think her stamps are photopolymer and um, I'm not sure I don't think I've I own a few of her stamps only through um these stash purchases and i think i only own like maybe one but i knew i know i i purchased a die in a d stash but it's a basic die like a square or a circle or something it's nothing like intricate or fancy so anyway she was she showed how to stamp it out and the whole time i'm listening to her and i was at the stop sign she said you could rub the residue off and i'm thinking not her fault, but why doesn't the stamp company have something that the residue rubs off? Like the final process is the residue rub off. Because, you know, I've always complained or griped about the, the extra stickiness on the photopolymer stamps. And um, that's my issue. A lot of photopolymer stamps, especially the larger ones, have residue. And I just feel like... You shouldn't have to condition the stamps as much as you would. It's, I've purchased some really pretty and expensive stamps from the UK. And I don't I don't enjoy using them because I have to go through so many issues to get them um, to stamp out pretty decent. And it just, you know, it bothers me. Like I have some hero art because I think hero art, yeah, hero art they use photopolymer as well 
And I do like a clear stamp. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy, I want to say these bubbles, hopefully. Um, I do enjoy seeing the image that I'm stamping down versus guessing with the red rubber images. But I just feel like I know that if I stamp one, you know, if I ink up the stamp with the red rubber one good time, I'm going to get a very decent image. And if I don't get a decent image, it's my fault. It's usually operator fault versus, you know, buying versifying ink, stamping it with the, and then, you know, I'm not good at embossing, but stamping it with the embossing ink, then going over and stamping it with regular ink. And then they're like, oh, you need pigment ink or dye ink or this ink or this ink. Um... So it can get frustrating, but I, I did enjoy her video where she said, you know, we can't keep giving, re reissuing the stamps because we're going to run out of product for our paying customers. And I was just like, well, that's a true statement. Very true. You know, if you have 20 people that ordered these stamps and only 10 are able to do it properly and five are like ah i'll just figure it out later and then you have the other five or ten people you know changing the numbers but saying oh this is the issue so if you have the five then you've issued ten stamp sets to that those five individuals you know because each person has gotten a resend i'm not sure if it's a free shipping situation that goes along with that but if it is you know the company's losing money and I don't consider Gina K to be a, a large Fortune 500 company. I consider her to be a small, you know, a small business, um, a smaller business, I should say. I'm not saying that she's not lucrative and profitable, but I, you know, a more smaller business than um, Sizzix, you know, for example. So anyway, I just found it very interesting that she said, you know, she said that like. Not in a bad way, just like, here, let me show you how to do this, because obviously, it's not working for you, you know? <laughs> and I was like, that's really cool. I thought that was really cool that, you know, she would take the time to show us. And, you know, it had a, it's a twofold. She can show you how you're supposed to be doing it. People that buy her products probably watch her videos, and they're like, oh, Versafine, a Versamark, I think is what she used. I use a Versamark, and then I do this, and then it works. But there are some people who I know are stampers that have did all of that stuff, all the tips and tricks, washed the stamp, um, everything, and still get the same results, which are no good. It kind of sucks, because a lot of people don't like to say oh i'm using acrylic stamp I, I like acrylic stamps they stamp out pretty good i know they don't last as long and um like you know i think um if not all of the recollection stamps for example are acrylic unless it says photopollen which i haven't seen you know recollection doesn't give much information on their stamps anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting this out and come back all right so i decided to cut her hair off right there um, and if we want to go back in and put it, attach it back, we can, but I just decided that I didn't want to stress myself out with this curl. Okay. So I'm not sure if you remember this piece I did. Uh, I used the back of it for my Julie nutting. Um, it wasn't Julie nutting. It was the rack for March, the random act of kindness card that I sent out. For March, I used the back of it. I was talking about saving a little seahorse. Well, today we get to kind of redeem ourselves because we're going to use this bottom piece right here. And her, let's see how she will look. I think this looks better with no hair. <laughs> so now I have this box. And I think this box is 7 by 8. So we're going to make sure I'm going to put this paper on here and get that get what I need off of it so this paper this is a gift box it looks like that but we're going to cut all of that stuff off in a few seconds
So I'll do that um, and come right back. All right, in case you're wondering how we're going to do this, I'm just going to um, get my X-Acto knife and cut the edges off and um, come back. All right, so if you're wondering where I got these boxes from, I got them from the Dollar Tree during Christmas time a few years ago. I think they come in a set of three or four. They have this on there, the different things are on there so i don't recall if it's a set of three or four so all right so now we're going to go ahead and move her out of the way and we're just going to place this directly on top and we're going to make this very simple for us today we are running out of time i'm going to probably go over time just a little bit today since i did so much fussy cutting on camera the thing is i want to bring you along for the experience i don't want to just be like here here's the experience i want you to see the steps the process all that good stuff um what's the use in creating and trying to give you some sort of inspiration if all you see is let me show you a piece of paper and then it's decorated right all right, so even though I drew lines right here, you can barely see them. I did cut a little bit above that because I want to be able to glue this down. I am going to glue it. I'm not going to tape it down. I am going to glue it directly onto the to the paper, um, the cardboard. And I want to have a little bit of room left over. So I wanted to hang over some. Just a slight amount. You see how it just barely hangs over. And the reason why I like to do that, you know, give it a little bit of extra room is because sometimes we make mistakes when we're gluing things down. They don't always stick or whatever. But in this case, I want to take um, a file and I want to file the edges off of it. So that won't be today, though. Now, I want to keep all of this in. So I want to file this side off, okay? So we're going to go ahead and glue her down right here. And this, I am going to cover up a little bit. Now I know this is, I think this is supposed to be like Parisian, but these little houses remind me of a different location versus Paris, I guess. See, it says Indian art show, I'm guessing. Madrid I don't know where it's at Bombay yeah so maybe it's not supposed to be Italy I mean Europe but you know I'm a sucker for maps now at this point you can glue it however you want to glue it if you want to adhere glue tape I'm going to use some Kalal glue now I think that this glue is probably similar to the I think I think don't quote me I think it has similar properties to the 3-in-1 or uh, fabric tech glue. They all smell similar and they have like that odor to them. So um, I'm going to use this because it doesn't bubble or bow. Or, um, it's, it's, I guess, oil. Is it oil? It's not water soluble. That's what I do know. And I want to use not a lot. This stuff is not cheap. I do order it from Crafters Companion, and it's not a very uh, cheap thing to purchase. I try to buy it when they have it on sale. But at the same time, I want to be able to get, I want to use all of it. And the reason why I'm using this one is just because I have a little bit more wiggle room. I could have, I could have given it some more though you know, I could have put a little bit more on it but we're going to stick to what we have and just rub it on there okay okay so I went ahead and took the scissors and just did that and so now the edges are roughed up all right, now it's time for true commitment. <laughs> We're going to glue her down. 
And even though that paper, the glue I use, it feels like the paper still kind of swerved a little on this, bubbled up some, but that's okay. Um, we're going to just push right on through. I'm going to stop the video in five minutes and we'll finish up this lady tomorrow. So I didn't put her all the way to the edge because I'm going to do something to these edges. Just going to burnish this in. Actually, I think I'm going to stop here and then we'll come back and we'll work on it some more. So I hope that you have enjoyed this process. I hope that you're enjoying my little vision. Um, I want to say thank you all for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.